Today, the Catholic Church in Southwest Indiana receives a new leader as Bishop Joseph M. Siegel takes his place in history as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Evansville. This sacred mass of installation comes to you live from St. Benedict Cathedral in Evansville, Indiana. From the Cathedral of St. Benedict in Evansville, Indiana, Welcome to the installation of the Most Reverend Joseph Mark Siegel as the sixth Bishop of Evansville. From all the parishes of the 12 counties of Southwest Indiana, the priests, deacons, religious, and faithful of the Diocese of Evansville are gathered here to participate in this historic event. They are joined by archbishops and bishops from across the United States who have traveled to join in this sacred ritual. Scores of priests and members of the faithful from the Diocese of Joliet are here, the diocese in which Bishop Siegel was born and raised, the diocese where he served first as priest and then as auxiliary bishop. As the procession begins, let's learn more about the new shepherd of the church in southwestern Indiana. Joseph Mark Siegel was born in Joliet, Illinois on July 18, 1963. He's the youngest of nine children born to Francis and Marie Siegel and grew up on the family farm in Lockport Township, Illinois. After graduating from St. Charles Borromeo High School Seminary, he studied at Joliet Junior College and completed his college education at St. Meinrad Seminary in Southern Indiana. He was sent to the Pontifical North American College in Rome for his theological studies and attended the Gregorian and Angelicum Universities. Father Siegel was ordained a priest for the Joliet Diocese on March 4, 1988 and was assigned to St. Isidore Parish in Bloomingdale, Illinois. While at St. Isidore, he completed his licentiate in sacred theology at the University of St. Mary of the Lake in Mundelein, Illinois, near Chicago. Father Siegel has had several parish assignments in the Joliet Diocese, including St. Mary Immaculate in Plainfield, St. Mary Nativity in Joliet, the Cathedral of St. Raymond, where he was also the Diocesan Master of Ceremonies and Pastor of Visitation Parish in Elmhurst. He served the Joliet Diocese in a number of positions. He was a member of the Diocesan Presbyteral Council for nine years, three of those as a chairman. He was appointed to the Diocesan Board of Consultors, was Director of Continuing Formation for Priests, served on the Diocesan Vocation Board and Priest Personnel Board, and was Dean of Eastern Will County. He chaired the Steering Committee for the Joliet Diocesan Year of the Eucharist and Eucharistic Congress, and was a member of the Bishop's Respect Life Advisory Board. Father Siegel's extensive service continued within the Catholic Conference of Illinois. He was the priest representative on the executive committee and chairman of the Catholics for Life Department. He is a fourth degree Knight of Columbus and a canon of the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre. On October 28, 2009, Pope Benedict nominated Father Siegel as Auxiliary Bishop of Joliet, and he was ordained in January 2010 by Bishop Peter Sartain, who named him Vicar General. In December 2010, Bishop Siegel was elected Diocesan Administrator of the Diocese of Joliet, and in July 2011, Bishop Daniel Conlon appointed Bishop Siegel as his Vicar General and Director of Ongoing Formation for Clergy. He currently serves on the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee for Divine Worship, has been the Region 7 Chairman and the Region's Representative on the Board of Directors of the Pontifical North American College. On October 18, 2017, Pope Francis appointed Bishop Siegel as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Evansville, Indiana. He will shepherd nearly 80,000 Catholics in 12 southwest Indiana counties. Bishop Siegel's diverse life experiences will serve him well. All of his assignments as a priest have been in cities or suburbs, but his rural upbringing has fostered a deep respect for farmers and farm workers his past work in Respect Life, 
vocation promotion, liturgy, and Catholic education has helped make those priorities in his role as bishop. Bishop Siegel is pleased to see the number of religious women currently serving in his new diocese. An aunt who was a Franciscan sister and the years of instruction he received from sisters, brothers, and order priests in his school years and seminary formation has helped Bishop Siegel form a great appreciation for religious women and men and all they contribute to the life of the church. On a personal level, I want to say that it is my hope and prayer that I may be a faithful shepherd after the heart of Jesus Christ serving the people of this local church with love and wisdom and courage. I'm committed to giving myself completely to my ministry as your bishop, to make every effort to effectively fulfill my role of teaching and governing and sanctifying in the name of Jesus, always relying on the grace of God and the intercession of Mary, the mother of God, our diocesan patroness. I've already begun to remember all of you in the diocese in my daily prayers and masses. And I ask for your prayers as well during this time of transition, as well as after I'm installed. So in all things, may Jesus Christ be praised, now and forever. Amen. This is a glorious day for the church in southwestern Indiana, and it's a glorious day for the church universal, as this diocese nestled between the Wabash and Ohio rivers receives and welcomes its new shepherd. The priests of the diocese and the priests of the Diocese of Joliet and priests from around the country are entering the cathedral now, bowing to the altar as a sign of respect for the Lord Jesus, who is symbolized by the presence of the altar, the altar around which the people of God gather. Bishops from around the country enter the cathedral now, wearing their distinctive mitres, the what they wear upon their heads as a symbol of their authority to teach and to govern and to sanctify God's holy people. Bishop Siegel enters along with Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio, and Archbishop Thompson, who will preside over the installation of Bishop Siegel. My name is Father Daniel Mayen, a priest of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis and pastor of St. John the Apostle Catholic Church in Bloomington, Indiana, and the pastor of St. Jude the Apostle Catholic Church in Spencer, Indiana. It is my distinct pleasure to host this broadcast and to offer words of commentary throughout the rite of installation and the Holy Mass. The Cathedral of St. Benedict is filled to capacity and many of those unable to attain, obtain a seat in the cathedral are watching this broadcast on television or through a live stream. However you are participating, may you be inspired and edified by the ancient rites carried out today so that the apostolic succession of bishops might continue in this local church. The Diocese of Evansville has been without a bishop for the last six months. On June 13th of this year, the fifth Bishop of Evansville, Bishop Charles Thompson, was appointed Archbishop of Indianapolis by Pope Francis. Today, Archbishop Thompson returns to this cathedral to install his successor. He does so as the Metropolitan Archbishop of the province of Indiana, a province that includes the Diocese of Evansville. Also present in the cathedral today is Bishop Gerald Gettelfinger, the fourth Bishop of Evansville, who served for over two decades from 1989 until his retirement in 2011. It's truly a blessing that this sacred rite of installation witnesses the presence of two former bishops of Evansville as Bishop Siegel is seated in the cathedra, therefore, thereby assuming the mantle of leadership of the more than 90,000 Catholics who live in southwestern Indiana. What you are witnessing is of great importance for the Catholics in the Diocese of Evansville. They welcome through this sacred rite their new bishop, the Most Reverend Joseph Mark Siegel. 
We join in praying for him as he begins his service as the spiritual and temporal leader of the Catholic Church in this local area. Bishop Siegel is charged to sanctify and lead a Catholic community that extends throughout the counties of Sullivan and Green in the north to the counties of Posey, Vanderburg, Warwick, and Spencer along the Ohio River, to the counties of Gibson and Knox along the Wabash River, and the counties of Martin and Davies, Dubois and Pike. The presence of the Catholic Church in this area dates back to the arrival of French Jesuit priests in 1732. The rich history of the diocese extends back to the arrival of Servant of God Bishop Simon Brute, who arrived in 1834 to found what was then known as the Diocese of Vincennes, a diocese that included the territory of the entire state of Indiana and the eastern half of the state of Illinois, including what Bishop Brute called the Little Village on the Lake, which is now known as the Great City of Chicago. The Basilica of St. Francis Xavier in the city of Vincennes bears witness to the heroic faith of the brave Catholics led by Servant of God Simon Brute, whose relics in the crypt of the old cathedral are venerated by thousands who seek his intercession and pray for his beatification and eventual canonization. The Diocese of Vincennes would in time become the Diocese of Indianapolis and later the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, from whose territory the Diocese of Evansville would be established in 1944. This is an important day for Catholics of Southwest Indiana, yet it is not only Catholic people who are impacted by what happens here today. The Bishop of Evansville leads a church that is deeply committed to the dignity of all human beings, a commitment that is expressed each and every day in the works of mercy carried out in her charities and family services. Without regard for a person's religious affiliation, the local church serves the poor and advocates for the dignity of the human person from the moment of conception until natural death. Bishop Siegel will lead the local church in this regard. Through its 26 schools from pre-K to elementary, from junior high to high school, the church seeks to instill knowledge and wisdom, self-control and discipline, moral discernment, and love for the poor and less fortunate. There are many families who are not Catholic who benefit from the church's efforts to educate the whole person, body, mind, and soul. the rite of installation will begin. The first part is presided by the Metropolitan Archbishop of Indianapolis, Archbishop Charles Thompson. Archbishop Thompson will introduce the representative of Pope Francis to the United States, the Papal Nuncio, the diplomatic representative of the Holy See, having the status of an ambassador. Archbishop Christophe Pierre has served as the Papal Nuncio since April of 2016. Archbishop Pierre will read the papal mandatum, the mandate, the order given from the hand of the Holy Father. The words of Pope Francis appointing Bishop Siegel to his new post will be read by the papal nuncio. The nuncio will question Bishop Siegel about his readiness and willingness to accept his new responsibility. And when Bishop Siegel does state his willingness to accept the charge that has been given to him, the people of God will respond, thanks be to God. The new bishop will then be led to the cathedra, the chair that gives the cathedral its name, and Bishop Siegel will take the seat of his office for the very first time. From that seat, Bishop Siegel will lead the people of God in the holy sacrifice of the mass. It will unfold with the singing of the Gloria, the proclamation of the liturgy of the Word, and the offering of the liturgy of the Eucharist.
Archbishop Thompson begins the rite. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. What a great day for the Church of Evansville, as well as the province of Indianapolis. I have the easiest job I think I will ever have as an archbishop. I get to begin with a few words and then turn it over to everyone else. <laughs> I am the guy in just a few moments who will be known as What's-His-Name, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. On behalf of the Diocese of Evansville, if I may, and the province of Indianapolis, special welcome to Archbishop uh, Christophe, Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio, Nuncio, Representative of the Holy Father to the United States. It is, you grace us with your presence. Thank you, Thank you so much. And as well, I want to welcome our, my brother bishops, uh, brother priests, religious, lay people who've gathered from all over, especially those who have traveled here from, from a great distance, particularly Joliet, uh, and a special welcome to the Siegel family. But most importantly, Bishop Siegel, welcome to your cathedral. Good to have you. I will now invite you to please be seated as I allow Apostolic Nuncio to address the congregation. Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Charles Thompson, Your Excellency, Bishop Gettelfinger, I greet you. I don't know where is Bishop Gettelfinger. You know him? <laughs> Greetings, Bishop. Your Excellency, Bishop designate Joseph Mark Siegel, my brother as bishops and bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the church in Evansville, dear friends, It is a great joy for me to join with you today in Evansville, the Crescent City, as Bishop Joseph Mark Siegel is solemnly installed as the sixth bishop of this local church. And is it not wonderful that in the presence of Archbishop Thompson and Bishop Gettelfinger we have with us the fourth and fifth bishops of Evansville. Indeed, I note with great interest that Bishop Siegel's episcopal motto is in te domine speravi. In you, O Lord, I've placed my hope. He is beginning his episcopal ministry to the people of God in Evansville during the season of Advent which for a Christian is a season, season of hope. During the weekly general audience, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, once reflected on the theme of Christian hope and its importance, especially during times which appear dark because of the evil and violence surrounding us. He commented, Life is often a desert. It is difficult to walk in life, but if you trust in God, it can become beautiful and wide, wide as a highway. When we are before a child, although we have many problems and many difficulties, a smile comes from within because we see hope in front of us. A child is hope. And in this way, we must be able to discern in life the way of hope which leads us to find God, God who became a child for us. He will make us smile. He will give us everything. Bishop-designate Sigala. 
we are confident that as a good shepherd, you will accompany the clergy and the faithful being entrusted to your pastoral care, building them up in holiness, fidelity, a spirit of service, and especially in Christian hope, not only to their spiritual benefit, but also to that of the community at large, reaching out to all the peripheries in need of the light of the gospel. At the end, I would like also to thank Father Bernard Etienne, or maybe better Etienne. Where is he? Here we are. I think we can thank him for the service he has given during this interview. And now I would like to read for you a translation of the text of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment from the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our venerable brother, Joseph Mark Siegel, until now, titular Bishop of Pupiana and auxiliary of the Diocese of Joliet in Illinois. If I was, uh, as I am French, I would say Illinois, but sorry. <laughs> Appointed Bishop of Evansville. Greetings and apostolic blessing. In our task of carrying out the Lord's mission on earth, it is in our judgment of the highest priority and necessity that the Church clearly proclaim as zealously as possible the peace and love of the good news, namely that by the fruitful virginity of his blessed mother, all the rewards of eternal salvation which he won for the human race he has given to the faithful. As we consider these things, we turn our thoughts to the spiritual needs of the ecclesial community of Evansville, which is currently vacant owing to the transfer of our venerable brother, Charles Coleman Thompson, to the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. It seemed to us only right to entrust the chief of this flock to you, venerable brother, since up to now, in your human and priestly labors, you have clearly shown yourself to be well endowed with what is necessary to pasture suitably this diocese. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we release you from the bond of the aforementioned local church and the office of auxiliary, and we appoint you Bishop of Evansville, granting to you the due rights and imposing the relative obligations which are connected to this mandate. Indeed, it is our wish that you bring this our decree to the attention of the faithful of this diocese, which under your leadership may always have the strength to face each challenge out of a correct concern for the common good of all, thus enabling everyone to pursue more completely and expeditiously their perfection. Finally, venerable brother, we earnestly beseech the Lord that, under the protection of Mary, the, Mo the Holy Mother of God, you may serve the people of God with an unsullied faith, strengthening them with hope from on high and nourishing them with an ardent charity. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the 18th day of the month of October, in the year of the Lord 2017, the fifth of our pontificate, and it is signed 
Francis. Most Reverend Joseph Siegel, you have heard the letter of His Holiness Pope Francis. You are called by the Holy Spirit to serve Almighty God and the people of the Diocese of Evansville in faith and in love as their shepherd. Having already accepted the appointment of the Holy Father, are you willing to serve the people of this diocese in the tradition of the apostolic faith of the Church? With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and with the love of God in my heart, I do accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Diocese of Evansville. I resolve to serve faithfully the spiritual needs of this local church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Bishop Siegel accepting the mandate of Pope Francis to offer clear and zealous proclamation of the good news. He's led to the cathedral by Archbishop Pierre, where he will be given the crozier, the shepherd staff, evocative of the Lord Jesus, the good shepherd who knows his sheep by name and who lays down his life for his flock. Archbishop Thompson gives Bishop Siegel the crozier. Bishop Siegel is now the bishop of the Diocese of Evansville. sings the Gloria, glory to God in the highest and peace to and of goodwill.
Let us pray. O oh God, in the covenant of your Christ, you never cease to gather to yourself from all nations, a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. Grant, we pray, that your church, faithful to the mission entrusted to her, may continually go forward with the human family and always be the leaven and soul of the human society to renew it in Christ and transform it into the family of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The introductory rites of the Mass are complete, and now we have the Liturgy of the Word, the proclamation of three passages from Sacred Scripture, the singing of a psalm, and a homily given by Bishop Siegel. The first reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom. <laughs> it's proclaimed by the Honorable Richard Siegel, Bishop Siegel's brother. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God of my ancestors, Lord of mercy, you who have made all things by your word and in your wisdom have established humankind to rule the creatures produced by you and to govern the world in holiness and righteousness and to render judgment in integrity of heart. Give me wisdom, the consort at your throne, and do not reject me from among your children. For I am your servant, the child of your maidservant, a man weak and short-lived and lacking in comprehension and judgment of laws. Indeed, though one be perfect among mortals, if wisdom who comes from you be lacking, that one will count for nothing. Now with you is wisdom who knows your works, and was present when you made the world, who understands what is pleasing in your eyes and what is comfortable, conformable with your commands. Send her forth from your holy heavens and from your glorious throne, dispatch her, that she may be with me and work with me, that I may know what is pleasing to you. For she knows and understands all things and will guide me prudently in my affairs and safeguard me by her glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first reading is followed by Psalm 33, the setting of the psalm composed by Judge Siegel.
The second reading will be taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12. And will be read by Jessica Mattingly. Lectura de la Carta del, Apóstol, del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos. Hermanos, todos nosotros, aun siendo sisters, muchos, formamos un solo we, cuerpo, unidos a Cristo, y todos cada uno parts somos miembros los unos de los otros. Pero tenemos dones diferentes, Since we have gifts según la gracia differ, concedida a cada uno, el que tenga el don de profecía, Let us exercise them. If prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministering, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, Let love be sincere, hate what is evil, hold on to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal, be fervent in spirit, Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the holy ones. Exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the ministers of the sacred liturgy prepare for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel. They approach Bishop Siegel with the incense. Bishop will place grains of incense upon burning coals so that the book of the Gospels might be honored. is the deacon who will proclaim the Holy Gospel.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Deacon David Siebert the, brings the book of the Gospels to Bishop Siegel, who reverences it with a kiss and blesses the assembly with the book of the Gospels, the book that contains the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the words of life. Bishop will now offer his homily, his own words reflecting upon the significance of the gospel. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen. Your Excellency, Archbishop here, Archbishops and Bishops, Brother Priests, Deacons, Seminarians, men and women religious, dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. It is with great joy that I stand before you as a newly installed sixth bishop of the Diocese of Evansville. I'm grateful to Pope Francis for appointing me to this local church in southwest Indiana, and I'm grateful to all of you for your warm and gracious welcome. For me, this is a homecoming of sorts. Having attended St. Mayan Red College Seminary for three years, I got to know this area. Now I'm a truly a Hoosier, <laughs> here to stay. I believe, as Archbishop Pierre said at the beginning of Mass, it is providential. The Diocese of Evansville begins a new chapter in its rich history during this holy season of Advent. Because Advent is a time of hope and expectation as we prepare to commemorate once again the coming of Christ Jesus in history, born as a child of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and come to be our Lord and Savior. Advent is a time for hopes and dreams as we look forward to what God will do in our lives in the days, months, and years ahead. The coming of Jesus Christ as man changed human existence forever. And our Lord Jesus continued to work his wonders and miracles in the lives of all believers today. I'm here because the Lord Jesus called me, unworthy as I am, to serve him first as a deacon, then a priest, and now a bishop. The wonderful mystery of vocation is one of the many wonders Christ Jesus works in our lives, whether it be a call to ordain ministry, religious life, marriage, the single state. And as the Lord has begun this good work in us, he will surely bring it to a good completion. Almost eight years ago, when I became a bishop, I took as my motto one of the final lines from the church's great hymn of praise, the Te Deum, in Te Domine Sperati. In you, Lord, I have placed my hope. I chose this line because I realized that if I would like to accomplish anything good and meaningful in my ministry, my hope had to be in God alone. I certainly realized that early on as a priest, I knew it was going to be even truer as a bishop. 
For this reason, I chose for this Mass the reading from the Book of Wisdom, the prayer of Solomon, as he became the leader of his people of Israel. It is a prayer for the gift of wisdom, holy wisdom, to lead and guide him in all that he did. I certainly pray for that gift today and every day. The wisdom of which we speak is the wisdom of God, not mere human wisdom, but the wisdom that leads us to all truth. It is the wisdom that helps us to recognize more deeply the presence and activity of God's love in our lives, in the lives of those around us. It is the wisdom to seek the courage to accept and trust God's love, even in the most difficult circumstances, even when that love leads us to accept our own share in the cross of Christ. In the inevitable struggles that life places in our path, this wisdom is the hope that enables us to know that God is with us, even in the darkest times. This wisdom is also hope that helps us to recognize that we are not alone in our journey of discipleship, in our mission of building up God's church, his kingdom. I am certainly learned as a pastor and as an auxiliary bishop that I can do very little by myself. That is why St. Paul's words to the Romans about the necessity that all parts of the body step, and step up and fulfill their role in the mission of the church, the mission of evangelization, of bringing the joyful good news of Jesus Christ to all people. These words are as crucial for us today and for us as they were for those first century Christians. St. Paul made it clear that in this unity of mission, not all have the same roles or functions. Some are called to exercise pastoral leadership and lead the church in worship and celebration of the sacraments. Others are called to be teachers and catechists, passing on the faith to young and old alike. Some are called to work full-time in the church, in parishes, or in the diocese. While others are called to share the faith in their homes, in their workplaces, schools, and communities. Some are called in a special way to be the charitable heart of the church, caring for the sick, the poor, and the marginalized, making the love of Christ's body tangible to those in need. And some are called to be bishops, to be the chief shepherd of the flock entrusted to their care, through their charism to sanctify, teach, and govern, serving after the heart of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In the Gospel passage from St. John, Jesus describes for us what a Good Shepherd looks like, namely, he is one who gives his life for his sheep. He is one who is courageous enough to stand up and defend his flock from anything or any person that comes like a wolf to try to harm and disperse those under his care. A good shepherd is one who knows his sheep well and is known by them. And yes, a shepherd after the heart of Christ must also have concern for those outside his flock, providing assistance and guidance to all those who come to him and reaching out to those on the peripheries. Clearly, this is a tall order for anyone who is entrusted with the role of shepherding a diocese as its bishop, even for one who stands six foot five. <laughs> Again, this is why I call upon the wisdom and grace of God to guide me in all aspects of my ministry as bishop, as I commit my life to caring for the spiritual and material needs of those in this diocese. I pray for the wisdom to recognize threats that could have a harmful impact on the welfare of our people, and for the courage to confront them, even at personal cost and even disapproval from the secular society around us. I hope to fulfill my role as shepherd of this diocese in the manner described by Pope Francis, that is, to lead you, to mark out the road ahead by my example, teaching and preaching, to walk beside you, accompanying you in the joys and struggles of your lives as you strive to live out the moral and ethical teachings of the church and the challenging situations you encounter each day, and to follow, making sure no one gets left behind, and they're always being ready to seek out the lost, to invite those who have left the practice of their faith, to help to bring healing and reconciliation to those in, in alienated from the church for any reason. Yes, this is a daunting vocation, and yes, without God's grace and help, it would be impossible. Therefore, as I begin my ministry as your bishop, I ask for your daily prayers, that I will be a holy, wise, loving, and courageous bishop, one who models his life and ministry on Jesus, the Good Shepherd. 
So what will I do as chief shepherd of this Diocese of Evansville? As I said on the day of my appointment, I don't come with any preconceived plans or strategies. Archbishop Thomas Thompson, Bishop Gettelfinger before him, helped lay a strong foundation on which I hope to build. In this first year, I look forward to listening and learning and seeking the wisdom of the clergy, diocesan staff, and various advisory councils in the diocese, especially as how we are to best implement the goals and objectives laid out in the 2016 Diocesan Pastoral Plan. In this context, I'm especially grateful to be able to draw on the experience of Father Bernie Aitchen, whom the Archbishop mentioned before, who has served the diocese faithfully as Vicar General and has been diocesan administrator since late July. I know the whole diocese was praying for a new bishop to be appointed, and I suspect none more fervently than Father Bernie. <laughs> Considering it took less than three months from my appointment, almost record time, I know I will be turning to him when I have a special intention that needs prayers. <laughs> Father Bernie has done a wonderful job, and in the name of the whole diocese, I again want to express my thanks to him for his generous service. In the coming months, I very much look forward to getting to know the people in these 12 counties, the priests and deacons, the religious, the lay faithful, young and old. I hope to begin soon visiting our parishes, schools, and institutions to learn more about the life, history, and culture of this part of Indiana, as well as the needs and concerns of the people who live, work, and worship here. As I mentioned at evening prayer last evening, when I was blessed to greet many of our local ecumenical, interfaith, and civic officials, I also look forward to being involved in the communities in our 12 counties and working with our government leaders and people of faith to serve the needs of all the people who live in Southwest Indiana. I invite all of us to take heart the final words of St. Paul in our second reading. Let your love be sincere. Hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. May our diocese be marked by our unity in faith, hope, and love, centered in the Eucharist, nourished by our prayer and study of our faith, and marked by our generous service to those in need in our communities. Hermanos y hermanas hispanos, su presencia en esta diócesis es una bendición. Ustedes, ustedes traen muchos dones a nuestra iglesia local y espero que usen esos dones para compartir las buenas nuevas de nuestro Señor Jesucristo y enriquecer nuestras comunidades con su fe y rica cultura. Que Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, patrona de las Américas, cuya fiesta celebremos el martes, les bendiga y les guíe siempre más cerca de su Hijo Jesús. As your bishop, I will count on you, the people of the diocese, clergy, religious, and laity, to fulfill your vocation in the body of Christ as missionary disciples, to carry the good news of what is proclaimed and celebrated and received at every Mass, and share it with those you encounter each day, wherever the Lord Jesus places you. For if we consciously and intentionally do and say all for the greater glory of God, for the building up of his church, and for the salvation of all people, indeed the God of peace will be with us, and our lives, our faith, our works of service will bear much good fruit. I entrust my fiscal ministry to our patroness, Mary, the Mother of God, who is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. May she lead us ever closer to her Son in this holy Advent season, that as he continues to incarnate himself in our church, so also he might be born again anew in our world through us. Let us join then with the prayer of all Christians throughout the world. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and fill us with your life, your grace, and your peace. May God bless you all. Bishop Siegel spoke of the gift of wisdom, that is the hope to know that God is with us even in the darkest of times. And he spoke eloquently of his role of shepherding the church by leading, marking out the road ahead, by accompanying his flock through their joys and sorrows as they strive to live the teachings of the church and to follow the Lord, and by following, 
making sure that no one gets left behind, seeking out the lost, and inviting back those who have left the practice of their faith. For the Lord in whom we have placed our hope, let us offer our prayers for the church and the world. For grace, mercy, and peace to embrace the ministry of Pope Francis, Bishop Siegel, and all the bishops as they spread the good news after the pattern of the apostles, let us pray to the Lord. Listen to your people, O For the Spirit's courage to help us raise a stronger voice in this nation, to stand up for the dignity of human life, for the protection of all creation, and for justice and peace for all, let us pray to the Lord. For the compassion of the Most High to console, strengthen, heal, and raise up all who are weary with illness, oppression, disrespect, neglect, fear, and hopelessness, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of the Diocese of Evansville to place our trust in the Lord always and to entrust our hopeful nature, our hopeful future to Mary, Mother of God, let us pray to the Lord. For joy in the hearts of Bishop Siegel's family, friends, and brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Joliet, and for more willing servants to hear and accept the call of God to holy service as priests, deacons, consecrated religious, husbands, and wives, let us pray to the Lord. For the eternal rest of all who have gone before us in faith, and for the sorrowful to rejoice in new life, let us pray to the Lord. Grant we pray, almighty God, that your church may always remain that holy people, formed as one by the unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which manifests to the world the sacrament of your holiness and unity, and leads it to the perfection of your charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thus concludes the first part of the Holy Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, the part that centers around the readings of sacred scripture. Now the seminarians of the Archdiocese of the Diocese of Evansville prepare the altar for the second part of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, the part of the Mass in which bread and wine will be placed upon the altar, simple, unleavened wafers made with wheat, flour, and water, and common table wine, gifts worth in and of themselves but a few pennies, 
will through the power of the Holy Spirit and the words of our Lord Jesus spoken upon them be changed, changed into the Lord's very body and most precious blood. The gifts are brought forward in procession to Bishop Siegel by his brothers and sisters and their spouses. They offer these gifts in gratitude for the calling that their brother has as a priest and a bishop called to offer the Holy Mass, called to celebrate the sacraments, called as bishop to sanctify, to teach, and to guide God's holy people. They offer these gifts in gratitude for the very word Eucharist means thanksgiving or giving thanks. It is the great prayer of thanksgiving that the church offers. Thanksgiving for the great sacrifice of our Lord Jesus upon the cross, the sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins, the sacrifice that all opens to us the gates of heaven. The deacon places the sacred vessels upon the altar, the chalices containing the wine, the patens that contain the bread, the wafers. What happens at the altar in the liturgy of the Eucharist is the very heart of the Catholic faith. The keeping of the Lord's solemn command, do this in memory of me. Was ever a command so obeyed as the command that our Lord gave at the Last Supper, that we should do this action until he returns in glory. This sacred action this great sacrament through which the Lord keeps his solemn promise, I am with you always, even to the end of the age.
Once again, incense is placed upon hot coals in the thurible. The smoke rising to the heavens is symbolic of the prayers rising up to God. Psalm 141, let my prayers rise before you like burning incense, O Lord. The gifts of bread and wine are incensed by the bishop, symbolic of the incense that was offered at the altar of sacrifice in the old temple. For this is the new temple, this is the new sacrifice, the one and eternal sacrifice. What happens at the altar is the same sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ offered on Calvary, albeit in an unbloody manner. Our Lord established the sacrament of the Eucharist to perpetuate his love, his sacrificial love, the love he extends on the cross. So what happens upon the altar is rightly called a sacrifice, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Bishop Siegel, the priest who offers the sacrifice in the person of Christ the head, is honored with incense, as are the concelebrating bishops and priests and the people of God. The bishop washes his hands as a sign of the importance of purity in approaching the altar of God, so sacred an act it is. Bishop Siegel will ask for the prayers of the people of God as he prepares to begin the great Eucharistic prayer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with kindness the offerings we bring you, O Lord, and grant that your church, which came forth from the side of Christ as he slept on the cross, may ever draw her holiness from, from participation in this mystery, living by it always, and responding worthy to its founder, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The bishops gather around the altar the to Lord consolidate. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom, 
be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being <coughs> and paying their homage to you the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, and in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, that it may be that it's spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a sincere and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, particularly remember Bishop Grimmelsman, Bishop Leibold, Bishop Shea, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a, 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 gla a place of refreshment light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. The gifts of bread and wine have been changed into the Lord's body and blood. The people of God prepare for Holy Communion by praying the Lord's Prayer. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
a sign of peace is extended among the ministers in the sanctuary and among the assembly, a sign of the peace of the risen Lord Jesus present in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, grant us peace. The sacred hosts are distributed to the concelebrants. The fraction of the large host is an ancient part of the mass. Bread must be broken in order to be shared. Jesus, the Lamb of God, had to give himself in order to truly be the bread of life for the world. And so, during the Lamb of God, Preparations are made for Holy Communion. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am thy Bishop Siegel and the concelebrating bishops and priests receive Holy Communion. They partake of the body of Christ and the precious blood of Christ. The bread and wine placed upon the altar have been changed into the gifts of inestimable value, the gifts worth more than silver or gold. They are nourished by Holy Communion, and in turn, they administer Holy Communion to the faithful gathered. They extend to others the great gift of Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the cup of everlasting salvation. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, words about the role of the bishop. Christ is himself the source of ministry in the church. He instituted the church. He gave her authority and mission and orientation and goal. In order to shepherd the people of God and to increase its numbers without cease, Christ the Lord set up in his church a variety of offices which aim at the good of the whole body. The holders of office who are invested with a sacred power 
are in fact dedicated to promoting the interests of their brethren so that all who belong to the people of God may attain to salvation. For how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? And how can men preach unless they are sent? No one, no individual, and no community can proclaim the gospel to himself. Faith comes from what is heard. No one can give himself the mandate and the mission to proclaim the gospel. The one sent by the Lord does not speak and act on his own authority, but by virtue of Christ's authority, not as a member of the community, but speaking to it in the name of Christ. No one can bestow grace on himself. It must be given and offered. This fact presupposes ministers of grace, authorized and empowered by Christ. From him, bishops and priests receive the mission and faculty, the sacred power to act in persona Christi Capitis, in the person of Christ the head. Deacons receive the strength to serve the people of God in the diaconia of liturgy, word and charity, in communion with the bishop and his presbyterate. The ministry in which Christ's emissaries do and give by God's grace what they cannot do and give by their own powers is called a sacrament by the church's tradition. Indeed, the ministry of the church is conferred by a special sacrament from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. From St. Ignatius of Antioch, bishop and martyr, who was instructed by the apostle St. John, and who won the crown of martyrdom in the early second century. Take care to do all things in harmony with God, with the bishop presiding in the place of God, and with the presbyters in the place of the council of the apostles, and with the deacons who are most dear to me, entrusted with the business of Jesus Christ, who was with the Father from the beginning and is at last made manifest. Take care, therefore, to be confirmed in the decrees of the Lord and of the apostles, in order that in everything you do, you may prosper in body and in soul, in faith and in love, in son and in father and in spirit, in beginning and in end, together with your most reverend bishop, and with that fittingly woven spiritual crown, the presbytery, and with the deacons, men of God. Be subject to the bishop and to one another as Jesus Christ was subject to the Father and the apostles were subject to Christ and to the Father, so that there may be unity in both body and spirit. St. Ignatius of Antioch. And from St. Augustine, the great bishop of the first millennium, what though is to be dreaded in this office, if not that I may take more pleasure, which is so dangerous in the honor shown me than in what bears fruit in your salvation? Let me therefore have the assistance of your prayers, that the one who did not disdain to bear with me may also deign to bear my burden with me, when you pray like that, you are also praying for yourselves. This burden of mine you see, a bit about which I am now speaking, what else is it after all but you? Pray for strength for me, just as I pray that you may not be too heavy. 
where I'm terrified by what I am for you, I am given comfort by what I am with you. For you, I am a bishop. With you, after all, I am a Christian. The first is the name of an office undertaken, the second a name of grace. That one means danger, this one salvation. Finally, as if in the open sea, I am being tossed about by the stormy activity involved in that one. But as I recall by whose blood I have been redeemed, I enter a safe harbor in the tranquil recollection of this one. And thus, while toiling away at my own proper office, I take my rest in the marvelous benefit conferred on all of us in common. St. Augustine. From Pope Benedict the 16th, Pope Emeritus Benedict. Word spoken to Bishop Siegel and those who gathered for a conference of newly ordained bishops. I therefore urge you, dear brothers, always to remain in the presence of the Good Shepherd and to assimilate his sentiments and his human and priestly virtues increasingly through personal prayer, which must accompany the apostolic challenges of your days. In intimacy with the Lord, you will find comfort and support for your demanding ministry. Do not be afraid to entrust your every concern to the heart of Jesus Christ, certain that he takes care of you as the Apostle Peter already recommended. Let prayer always be nourished by meditation on the Word of God, by personal study, by recollection, and by sufficient rest so that you may serenely be able to listen and understand what the Spirit says to the churches and to lead all to the unity of faith and love. With the holiness of your life and pastoral charity, may you be an example and a help to priests your first and indispensable collaborators.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be rejoice and be glad. Now a hymn of meditation in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patroness of the Diocese of Evansville. Bishop Siegel will now offer the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Nourished by the sacrament of your Son, we implore you, Lord, to make fruitful the work of your church. For by it you constantly reveal the fullness of the mystery of salvation to the poor, whom you have called to an honored place in your eternal kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, there's a formal letter of gratitude and acknowledgement in your programs. I did want to, at the end of Mass, express my thanks to all of you for your prayerful presence at this liturgy today, to especially Archbishop Pierre, Archbishop Thompson, and my brother bishops, priests, deacons, religious, all of you, the faithful, for your prayers and good wishes. Continue to remember me in your prayers as I begin my ministry now as Bishop of Evansville. And we're glad to make you a Hoosier now. <laughs> the celebration will continue following Mass. We have a reception in the uh, cafeteria that's in the lower level of Scholastica Hall. If you go out the side and follow the buildings, uh, you'll see a sign for Scholastica Hall, St. Scholastica Hall. There is an elevator inside the doors if you need one, or you can take the steps down and join the celebration. The Most Reverend Father Joseph, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Evansville, will give the Apostolic Blessing with a plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and receive Holy Communion. Pray to God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Joseph, and for our Holy Mother Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolations order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, 
rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. Through the intercession of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Bishop Siegel embarks upon his mission to sanctify, teach, and lead the people of God of Southwest Indiana as their new bishop. He does so having received the papal mandate from Pope Francis and having been prayed for by the assembly gathered and by the Church Universal. He will likely lead the Diocese of Evansville in the joyous celebration of its 75th anniversary in 2019. He will most certainly confirm hundreds of young people throughout his service as bishop. God willing, he will ordain many priests for service to the people of God so that the sacraments might be celebrated to the glory of God and the upbuilding of the kingdom. Bishop Siegel comes highly recommended by those in the Diocese of Joliet. Sister Judith Davis, the Chancellor of the Joliet Diocese, says he will be a tremendous blessing to the people of the Diocese of Evansville. He is a shepherd who cares about people and their feelings. He is compassionate, listens, and is very approachable. His priests will be happy to know that they can approach him. He's extremely intelligent, and he invites collaboration and speaks from his heart. He is well-liked by everyone, and I believe it's because of his humility. Edward Flavin, the Diocesan Director of Communications for the Diocese of Joliet says, I have had the pleasure of working with Bishop Siegel for the last four and a half years. He is very compassionate and pastoral. Evansville will be blessed to have him as their shepherd. And Nora Labanaskas, the assistant to Bishop Siegel for the past two years, says he's the best person to work for. Evansville is getting one of the best possible priests as bishop. I'm really going to miss him. We all are. Everyone's going to miss him. That's all I'm hearing from everyone. The diocese will get to know their new bishops in the months ahead as he visits the parishes and as he takes part in the life of the diocese, they will find in Bishop Siegel a man of holiness, a man of integrity, and a shepherd who leads confidently with a steady hand. I know this to be true. I have known Bishop Siegel since 1981 when we studied together first at St. Meinrad and then at the North American College in Rome. The Diocese of Evansville is truly blessed. Thanks be to God.
You have been watching the installation of Bishop Joseph Mark Siegel as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Evansville. May we be grateful to Almighty God for the opportunity to participate in this beautiful rite, and may we continue to ask God's richest blessings upon Bishop Siegel and the people of God of the Diocese of Evansville. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, St. Mark, St. Francis Xavier, and servant of God, Simone Brute, and above all, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may the many prayers of this day bear fruit in abundance as the Church of Southwest Indiana moves forward in its mission of evangelization and service. This is Father Daniel Mayen of St. John the Apostle Catholic Church in Bloomington and St. Jude the Apostle Catholic Church in Spencer, wishing you and your families the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.